Hey guys, I've been running this Watchmon 5 for a couple of days now. Uh, in today's video, we're going to take a look at expanding the Watchmon 5 using this MM8 expansion. This will allow us to add our second string of battery banks onto the Watchmon 5. And my plan is just to mount it right next to it, like so. Now this video is going to be structured assuming you have watched the first video, so I'm not going to go over like how I built these connections and the ferrules and the crimps and all that. So if you need to see any of that information, I will leave a link to the first video in the description below. Now the design of this is simplified quite a bit compared to the Watchmon 5 because the intent of this is only to add additional strings to monitor, so it does not have the full functionality as the Watchmon 5. It has a sticker covering the balance ports, similar to the Watchmon 5, three temperature sensors, a USB port for updating the firmware. We have the CAN bus connector, so this will connect with a twisted pair to your Watchmon 5. And it also has a supply power connector. You'll notice the supply pins come with a sticker that says 12 volts. Unlike the Watchmon 5, which can take a 48 volt input, the MM8 expansion will only run on 12 volts DC. So that's another reason why I decided to use the 12 volt Meanwell converter, because that will supply power to both my Watchmon 5 and any additional MM8 expansions I choose to install. So like the Watchmon 5, the very first step to installing this MM8 is you will want to connect it with the USB connector and ensure the firmware is up to date. Alright, so to get started, we'll open the Watchmon Toolkit software. Now you will need software version 2, revision 14, to install your MM8s. This software is not publicly available on the Batrium website, but if you purchase an MM8 expansion, uh, they will provide this to you. So you can see we're currently connected to my Watchmon 5. We'll need to click the connection icon and change this to USB to get to the MM8 and change the COM port to 6. So next we'll need to go to menu, tools, firmware updater, supervisor selection, this is a Multimon MM8, verify the software is not running, click upgrade, and like before this will take a few minutes to complete and we see we have upgrade successful, so we can go ahead and reopen the toolkit. And with the firmware update complete, I am ready to connect this to the DIN rail. And same as before, I'm going to mount my testmon directly below the MM8. Now, as I stated before, I covered how to do the wiring, the fusing, and all of that in the previous video, so if you want to see how I set this up and configure this, please check the description below for my previous video. So you notice I still have it set to 14S, as this is a 14S string of batteries. So when I press the test button, it says pass, so I know all of this wiring is correct and safe to use on the MM8, and I'm ready to proceed to the next step. So on the Watchmon 5, we have a CAN bus connector, and that's the same CAN bus connector on the right. Now I've never personally worked with CAN bus, so this is going to be the first time I experiment with this. However, my understanding is that there is a high-low ground pin, and a high-low ground pin over here. The only thing we need to do is connect the high to the high and the low to the low with a small piece of twisted wire. I did ask Batrium about the ground and they said the ground pin only needs to be connected if you're doing a long run of wire. Since this is only a couple of inches here, I'm not going to bother with it or if you need to isolate from interference. So to make the wire for the CAN bus connection, I just took a small piece of Category 6 Ethernet cable and I pulled out one of the two twisted pairs. So I stripped off about a half an inch of the insulation from both leads. And like before, I'm going to use a ferrule to ensure a quality connection. And after that's complete, I now have a very nice twisted pair jumper lead ready for installation. All right, so you'll also notice on your Watchmon 5, it ships with a 120 ohm resistor connected between the high pin and the low pin of the CAN bus connector. In a CAN bus network, you will need a terminating resistor at each end of the network string. So there's only two devices in my network here, so I'm going to need a terminating resistor on this connector and a terminating resistor on this connector. Now, if I had a third MM8 over here, I would need a terminating resistor here and a terminating resistor here, but I would not need one on this one since this would be the middle connection in the network chain. All right, so I'm using the green conductor for the high and the striped conductor for the low. And you can see I installed my terminating resistor behind the two connections. Um, I guess optimally the terminating resistor could have been crimped into the ferrule, but I didn't want to have to risk cutting this later if I add additional MM8s. So if you do it the way I did here and connect it behind the connection, just make sure it's tightened down enough such that the connector is properly grabbing both wires. Alright, so I've got my cable connected here. You can see the high pin is wired to the high pin, the low to the low, and then on the back I have a terminating resistor in each connector. 
Before I plug this in, I'm going to switch off the Watchmon 5 just for added safety. And as I connect this to, I'm double checking the printed lettering on the circuit board just to make sure I had the pinouts correct. And after you double check, you're ready to turn back on your Watchmon 5. Uh, now, in order to get these two to communicate with one another, there are several software configuration steps we're going to have to change in both the Watchmon 5 and the MM8. So I'm going to access the Watchmon 5 through the Wi-Fi connection. For the MM8, I'm going to plug in the USB. All right, so now we need to do a few steps for these two devices to talk to one another. Batrium has put together this helpful article regarding your Multimons, your Watchmon 5, and the CAN bus network. It explains the connection properties, the pinouts, the terminating resistors, and also explains the settings you need to change on both the Watchmon 5 and the MM8. So first I'm starting on the Watchmon 5, going to Menu, and clicking Hardware. On the Cellmon tab, click Edit. You'll want to change Has Satellite to On for the Watchmon 5. Next you'll have to set the group range. So this is the amount of battery packs you have plugged into the specific device. I have 14 battery packs plugged into my Watchmon 5. The first battery pack is 1, and the last is 14. Next we need to define the entire range of battery packs. I have two parallel strings of battery packs, so the first one will be 1, and then the last one is going to be 28. Additionally, because we have multiple parallel strings, you need to turn diff nominal to on, and the amount of battery packs in series is 14. And click save. Next, on the Integrations tab, click Edit. We need to make sure the CAN bus is turned on, and Protocol Mode should be set to Project Coconut. Next, we'll need to define the addressing parameters for the CAN network, and this is a step that confused me the most at first. However, having done it a couple of times now, it does make sense, in addition to Batrium revising their documentation. So let's take a look at this hardware layout image here. The addresses are formatted in Base16 notation, as noted by the X in front of the number here. So when you count normally, you count digits 0 through 9, and then after 9 comes 10. As such, when you count base 16, you count digits 0 through 9, and then instead of going to 10, you go A through F. So a 0x500 address translates to a base 10 number of 1,280. The same way you see this uh, 0x520 address translates to a base 10 number of 1312. So back on your Watchmon 5, the base address is 500, which translates to 1280. Next, we'll need to set the group address, and the group address is what keeps all the devices together. So our group address is going to be 0x520 for all devices. That includes all Watchmon 5s and MM8s. And 520 translates to 1312. So for the group address, I'm going to enter 13, 12, click enter. And we're complete here, so click save. And now we're going to configure the MM8. So I'm switching my connection selector back to USB. So go to menu, hardware. On the Cellmon tab this time, click edit. We need to make sure has satellite is left off. And now for the group range, this MM8 is going to have packs 15 through 28 because remember the Watchmon 5 had packs 1 through 14. So you'll see the entire range is automatically populated with the same values because we have have satellite turned off and we don't need to make any changes with diff nominal either on the Multimon 8. And click Save. Next on the Integrations tab. Now Batrium does recommend running the wizard for the MM8 which should set some of these settings for you. However to give both myself and you guys a better understanding of the addressing and how this is configured, I wanted to go through this manually. But uh, if you only have one MM8, like I said, just click the defaults tab in the wizard. So I'm going to go to edit, turn the CAN bus on. Now for the protocol mode, Batrium recommends selecting this Multimon satellite option. However, they also provide a second option for faster refreshes called Reserved 37. I'm going to use Reserve 37 on mine because I'd prefer to see the faster refresh data. Uh, however, you may want to stick with the recommendation of Multimon Satellite for yours. So, Reserve 37. Base address. So, we're looking at our chart here. The base address for the first MM8 is 0x40, which translates to a base 10 number of 1344. So, 13. 
1844. And once again, the group address will be the same for all devices, which is 520 or 1312. And click Save. And you'll notice too, after you enter these base 10 numbers and you click Save, it will populate the hexadecimal values over here on the right, just to confirm you have the correct number set. We'll switch back to our Watchmon 5, and we now have 28 batteries displayed, however we only see voltages for packs 1 through 14. It's time to connect our balance lead so we can see the remaining 14 battery packs. Alright, so I still have this device powered through USB. I have not connected the supply power pins yet. I'm ready to remove the read instructions before use sticker because I have thoroughly read the instructions. So once again, I'm going to push the test button just to make sure it passes. It still says pass. So I'm ready to remove these two connectors and place them in the MM8. As with the Watchmon 5, you'll always want to do the lower voltage connection first and make sure you don't mix up these two connections. A good way to avoid mixing these up is to take pins 7 and 8 and just put a zip tie around them. That way you cannot mix them up. I'm not going to do that in this particular video, but I definitely recommend doing that if you're doing a similar installation. So remove both of them. So lower voltage first, line up the pins, and then you'll want to press it in in a quick motion. Higher voltage, line up the pins, and press it in. And back on the laptop, we can now see the voltages of all 28 battery packs. And it looks like I have a critical alert because I have not plugged in the temperature sensors on the MM8s. So make sure you don't forget to plug in your temperature sensors. Um, with this being complete, I can remove the USB cable, and then we're going to go connect the 12 volt input of the MM8. Alright, so here are my positive and negative supply leads. And one thing that was suggested to me after my last video, since I did not use color-coded wiring, uh, to avoid mixing these up, was to use some printed heat shrink to label these as positive and negative. And that's actually a great idea because I do have a label printer and they do make heat shrink cartridges for it. And I actually had the heat shrink cartridges for it already. So I don't know why I didn't think of that uh, beforehand. Uh, but thank you to whoever that was that pointed that out. Just slide that on like so. There we go. Now there is zero chance of mixing these two up. Now I can remove the USB and plug in my new 12 volt connector. Uh, double checking that the polarity is correct based on the labels and based on where I'm connecting it. And we can see it's starting up successfully. All right, and here's the final product. Now that I connected my temperature sensors, the Batrium is happy again, the critical state has gone away. I also went and labeled all of the 12 volt inputs, that way there is no confusion. Again, thank you to the person who recommended the heat shrink. One thing to add too is that it was pointed out by Batrium to me that you do not need the 12 volt supply connected on the expansion board unless you're utilizing the MOSFET outputs. If the only thing you're using are the relays, uh, it's actually best not to connect the supply inputs. That being said, this is a very, very nice and clean cabinet that is set up here. And the discount code Batrium has given us to purchase these for free shipping is still available. Head on over to the Batrium store and use coupon code BATTERY for your free shipping offer. That is good for the Watchmon 5, Watchmon 7, and the MM8 expansion. And it's good for shipping to the United States and most of Europe. And once again, that was an exclusive offer from them to you. I still had to pay for shipping on my own, and I do not receive any kind of commissions or anything when you use that, so... If you liked this video, please hit that like button down below. It helps the channel tremendously. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you later.